Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I'm going to be going over three different examples of folder structures that you might want to use in your Next.js application. With the release of Next.js 13, uh, a lot of people have been wondering how does that impact how you should structure your project and what are the best practices for structuring your projects. And since my previous videos on folder structures did pretty well, I decided that this could be a great video for you guys. As a reminder, uh, like I've said in every video that I've made related to folder structure, this is only opinion based. And also you shouldn't just copy directly what I'm doing and then build your project based on that because that doesn't make sense. You should have a clear idea behind how organized you want your project to be. And remember that organizing your project in a certain way is meant to help you and you only or whoever is working on that project, if you're working with more people have a faster and more efficient development process. So that means that folder structure isn't meant to improve your code, make it faster or anything like that. It's meant to uh, make your project more organized and more readable for other people and for yourself. So with that in mind, let's get into the video. Before we get into the video, I would like to take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, Kind.com. Kind is a company that is revolutionizing the way we approach authentication. It doesn't matter at which stage of your learning journey you are right now, you will run into having to set up authentication for your website. And as many of you might know, authentication can be a very common hassle because of how annoying it is to set it up and all of the security risks that come with a mistake. So that's why Kind offers solutions like passwordless authentication, social and enterprise SSO, and multi-factor authentication, which not only ensures security for your website, but also provides an amazing user experience. Now, what I really think sets Kind apart is its powerful ability to customize depending on what website you want. You can basically create your website and Kind will tailor to your authentication experience, whatever you want to put in your website. Not only that, but they have a robust user management system, which allows admins to have full control over user access. And on top of that, they have an amazing feature flag product, which allows you to deliver certain parts of your code to specified groups of users that you want in your project. With this specifically, one cool thing you can do is something that we do in every single company, which is if you want to release a feature, you can add it the amount of users that will receive that feature and see how many bugs arise. You can see what happens and then scale up as you go. The cool thing is that they just released their new Next.js 13 SDK. So if you want to check them out, the link will be in the description. They have three different plans that you can choose from where one of them is actually free. So you can actually have unlimited signups and with up to 7.5 thousand active users and unlimited signups. And depending on how much you enjoy the platform, you can even scale it up and it's a pretty affordable price for the amount of features and tools you're getting from Kind. Again, thank you so much Kind for sponsoring this video. I love the platform. I've used it in the past and I couldn't recommend it more for you guys because I know a lot of you guys are struggling with authentication and I know Kind is the solution. So now let's get into the video. Okay, everyone. So the first folder structure I want to show you guys is at the beginner uh, folder structure, right? So over here, as you can see, I have a very simple uh, application that was just created by using the create next app command. And I believe that beginners in Next.js, they usually don't steer too much away from the boilerplate code that comes with uh, the create next command. So the reason for that is because um, the boilerplate code is very uh, intuitive. It, it comes with a lot of the stuff already made. I just added a couple more folders over here just to to demonstrate what a beginner would probably do. So a beginner would just use the command, create the project. And in Next.js 13, you have the source folder and the app folder, right? Inside of the app folder, for those who don't know, um, in the new version of Next.js, we have a new routing system, meaning that in previous versions, we had a folder called pages and every single file that we added to that folder would automatically become a route. And that, in my opinion, was horrible because if I wanted to group files, um, for example, group a file that wasn't a page together next to a file that was a page, then obviously this would cause issues. Sometimes I would find myself accidentally creating routes, which is something that you definitely don't want. So um, with the app router is actually a little bit different. Um, in order to create a page, you would see something like this. 
For example, you would have you would see a home page or a contact page or a profile page, and there are actual folders instead of this app folder. And in order to determine if it's a page or not, you click on the folder and you have to put a page.tsx file. Only then uh, this will actually become a route. You see, for this video, I don't have any code in any of those pages. Actually, a lot of these folders are empty, but it's just for demonstration purposes. And I think this would be a great example of an actual beginner folder structure. We would also take use of uh, all the files that already already originally come with um, the command, like, like the layout file and also the globals.css file. Now, one thing I want to mention is if you've seen my previous videos on uh, the folder structure in React, um, you've seen that I put a lot of emphasis on how to structure and organize your files relating to styling. However, with Next 13 or with Next.js in general, it's very common for you to use Tailwind CSS, which is embedded in your code, uh, the styles. So I won't be focusing at all on styles because uh, if you're using Tailwind, you would just write the class names um, you know what I mean, if you've ever used Tailwind, you don't need to create an external file, although you might want to for global CSS, if you're interested, if you were interested in doing that in your project, uh, I don't think a beginner really need that. But if they do, they have over here the globals.css file that they can use in that case. And finally, for a beginner project, um, there must be other components other than um, than the, the individual routes, and some of them might even be client components. So in Next 13, there's obviously together with the new version React 18 of React, we were introduced with the idea of a client and a server component. And by default, all of the uh, components that exist inside of this app uh, folder over here are by default server components. So um, you can turn a server component into a client component, obviously by just um, adding at the top over here, the use client uh, string, and this would become a client component. Um, so in case you need them, which you might need, obviously, because client components are used for a lot of different use cases, like calling the DOM API or using any of the built in react hooks, any of that, um, you would put them in probably in inside of a components folder. Now for a lot of you, this could actually just be what you do for your project and you can expand from this. Now, as a change of pace, I will show you guys on the intermediate project, it looks similar to this, but I just added more folders that might come in clutch when you're working with a harder application. Okay, so for the intermediate folder structure, we could have something similar to this. So straight off the bat, you'll see that the there's a difference already when I open up the source folder. With the beginner, I actually put all of my code inside of the app folder. But for the intermediate, I would probably separate it a little bit different. For example, I would have a components folder that exists outside of the app folder for a lot of my client side components, because I just find it better to organize in this way. You don't have to do this, like I mentioned, if you want to turn any server component to a client component inside of the app folder, you can just use the use client string. However, I do think that there's merit to organizing it this way. And I see a lot of people doing this as well. So it isn't just something that is my my personal opinion. Uh, I like doing it this way. And you'll see that it's similar to this on the advanced as well. Now, I would say that an intermediate developer will probably use some contexts inside of their project, probably because they're creating a login or a register, and they need to save some sort of information about a user who's logged in, uh, probably some global hooks as well. So like hooks that can be used out all over your project. And that's why I would put it over here. But also, if inside of individual groups of components and pages that might use uh, individual hooks that are specific for those groups of components can have a folder called hooks inside of those as well. Now, inside of our app over here, you'll see that the main difference is that we now have uh, the API folder, which if you're not familiar, you can obviously work with a uh, the, like a Node.js Express API inside of Next.js. And you would probably put that code inside of this API folder over here. Now, with the introduction of server actions, I actually decided to put that on the advanced folder structure. So if you're interested in knowing what I would do with that, uh, just stick around. But for an intermediate, maybe you would want to create your individual routes for each specific mutation you, you do to your database or a or individual requests you do to your database, you can make a, an individual route inside of this folder. And on top of that, you can also have um, an auth folder over here, which could contain anything from, uh, like I mentioned, either a context related to auth that you didn't want to put on the other folder, 
or the routes for signing in and for logging in and registering, you could put them over here. Anything related to authentication, uh, you would put inside of this folder. Now you see over here, we have a, a folder called routes. And this is something this specific way to organize your code. Um, I've seen it a couple of times. I've created one project in the past, which I did it, I did it like this. It was right when I started playing around with Next.js 13. And to be honest, I didn't find any problems with it. I just think um, the advanced version is better. However, I would say if you're interested in organizing your project this way, this is how we would go. So with Next 13, you can actually um, group different routes without turning them into um, actual routes by having this uh, parenthesis around this over here. So for example, I can create a group of routes called routes like this with the parentheses around. And over here, each of these folders would uh, be related to one specific route uh, that we're going to have in our application. So we can have an about route, a contact route, a dashboard route, and so on. So the what we're doing here is we want to have different server components inside of our app, right? but we want to distinguish them from the actual routes that we have in our application. So what I'm doing here is I create a group of routes, I put all of the routes inside of this group of routes. And outside I have other folders and other files related to that can be inside of the app folder, but not but are not specifically individual routes that we want to put in our app. Now for the routes specifically, uh, I'm not going to get too much into depth of of what we put inside of these folders, because I did make two videos already or three in total, I think, uh, where I went over in depth of how you could organize individual groups of, of components. Uh, I'll just give you a brief overview. Whenever I create something like this, like a page in an application, right? Uh, for example, we have here the the products page, right? I'll probably group this by adding the test files, uh, any styling you might want to have inside of this that is related to products, and any group of sub pages that we want to have in this in this route. Not only that, but depending on how big your project is, this, this can be very, very deep, this a specific part of our folder structure. So organizing it in such a way that we're using only components and tools related to this specific route is important so that we can have a more organized project. Um, so that's kind of what I would do. I'd put this the, the testing and anything else that would interest me as well. But yeah, that's that's basically it for intermediate. Let's get into the advanced folder structure. Okay, for advanced, I, I, I it looks eerily similar to some to a project that I've been working on. Uh, I might show it to you guys uh, soon. But <laughs> uh, it's basically and it's been working pretty well. It's basically like this, you have our source folder over here. And we have a group of different folders that you might want to have in your app, right? We have vendor, first of all, vendor is just to include anything related to third party APIs that you might be using in your app. Uh, and if you've worked on a company, you've probably seen a folder like this, uh, because this is very standard in the industry when you're working with external APIs. Uh, then we have our server actions. Now, if you recall, I talked about uh, the idea of server actions, and they they are a different way released in in Next.js 13 to actually uh, make API requests inside of your project. They're really cool. I'm gonna make a specific video on server actions if you guys are interested. But uh, if you already know what server actions is, which I'm assuming in this case, if you're interested in the advanced folder structure, uh, I would probably put the server actions outside of our app, uh, the app uh, folder. Now, some people like to put it inside. Obviously, a lot of people actually want to put it directly inside of their components and use the use server uh, string, uh, wherever they want to make that request um, to just turn that specific part of a client component into a server component. But I personally don't like to overuse that I like to actually create my functions uh, for server my server actions, uh, and, the, and the functions that are used in, to execute those actions uh, inside of this folder over here, and I actually separate each of those functions by uh, different parts of my website. So all of the server actions related to user, I would put inside of the user folder, all of the ones related to store, I would put inside of this one and all related to products, I would put inside of this one. It goes to say, uh, all of these folders are just examples, right? Uh, imagine a imaginary website over here where it had those folders, I forgot to mention that in the beginning. But then we would also have obviously the hooks folder, like I mentioned before, and I would also put a database folder over here for any database configuration that could also merge into the config folder. But I kind of imagine config more related to actually configuration of the project in itself and not uh, 
database related stuff. I like to have my own DB folder. Um, obviously, again, context and components. Um, and this component folder could actually, the tree below it could actually expand really deep depending on how many components you have. And um, you would probably, by this point, uh, kind of have an idea of how you're, you're organizing your project. So I won't get that much into that. Now for the app, I would probably organize it this way. I would group different parts of routes um, by using the obviously the route grouping syntax over here. And uh, I'll probably have my auth folder like before. And it, like I said, inside of it, I'll probably have the login and the register pages. Um, and nothing much different from what we've mentioned before for the events. There's also the idea of private folders, which I actually didn't add here. But uh, obviously, if you have a route, for example, uh, we have the login route over here, right? And I had a page.tsx. Uh, a lot of people might want to create a folder that is not specifically related to a new route, but it's just some sort of component related to this login page. Well, you can actually put a prefix underscore over here um, and write something like components. And now this folder over here, uh, Next.js will know that nothing inside of here will be a route, so it will just ignore that. So you can put all of the files you want over here and it won't be treated as a route. So you can see this as well in different parts of an advanced project. So this is basically it. These are the, the three different examples I came up with. Um, obviously, like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is just my opinion. This is just my experience. We've all been working with Next.js 13 uh, for the same amount of time, probably because it's it's literally been released a couple months ago. Um, so this will be developed with time. And, and, and as more people work on next 13 projects, they will come up with better ideas that I might try out and I might think are better than the ones I presented in this video. But the reason why I wanted to make this is because so many people are confused right now uh, and has been for the past few months. And I know for a fact I was confused on trying to understand where to put what. So that's why I wanted to do this. And if you're going to go to the comments and be like, oh, this is completely wrong and this would never work. Well, I have to say, this is my opinion again. <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. Um, you can do you and I'll do me. Uh, we all have different opinions on this. And I want to create a good discussion in, this, in the comments. So let me know what you guys think. And I'll, I'll let you know we can have a healthy discussion about this topic. Now, again, thank you kind for sponsoring this video. You guys should check their link in the description. And yeah, that's that's basically it. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time.